Man fatally shot in alleged police shootout in St. Catherine. An investigation has been launched in the death of a man who was killed during an alleged shootout with the police near Lake Crispin in St. Catherine. It is reported that about 7.15 p.m., police personnel were on patrol along Port Henderson Road when upon reaching in the vicinity of a bar, the cops observed a group of men. A man reported a brandish a handgun and started firing at the police. The police returned fire. When the shooting subsided, the unidentified man was found with gunshot injuries. According to the police, an AG 9mm pistol was retrieved from him. He was assisted to the Spanish Town Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The Independent Commission of Investigation has launched an investigation into the incident. Range Rover driver charged in relation to Manchester fatal crash. The driver of the Range Rover has been charged in relation to Monday's crash in Manchester, which claimed the life of 10-year-old Trevon Sanchez. Chadwick Young, 31, a music producer and coolant manufacturer and resident of Main Street Cristiano, has been charged with causing death by dangerous driving. Police said he is also charged for leaving the scene of an accident and disobeying the continuous white line. He is scheduled to appear in court on September 25, 2024. Sanchez's mother, a police constable, remains hospitalized in stable condition. Woman mowed down in St. Catherine A woman died from her injury she sustained in a motor vehicle accident on the Port Hennis Main Road, Bridgeport, in St. Catherine on Thursday. The police were unable to confirm her identity at this time. Reports were that about 5.20 a.m., a Delta Probox motor car was traveling along the roadway. It is alleged that upon reaching a section of the road, a woman was crossing the road when she was hit by the motor car. She was transported to hospital where she was confirmed dead. The police said the driver was subsequently born for prosecution. The investigation is ongoing. Police probing escape and recapture of man allegedly held with illegal gun. The St. Catherine North Police are probing an incident in which a man who was arrested for alleged illegal firearm possession reported the escape police custody in Linstead on Thursday morning. It is reported that about 7.40 a.m., police personnel from the Air 5 Fugitive Apprehensive Team went to River State St. Catherine and seized an illegal gun and arrested five men. They were taken to the Linstead Police Station, however, while being taken to the cells, one of the men reportedly escaped through a side gate and went on top of the building. An alarm was raised and the man reportedly jumped off the building and ran into the nearby community with the police in chase. The man was reportedly joined by another man who fired at the police. Based on intelligence, the police subsequently went to the Vinity Fair area outside Linstead where a group of men was reportedly spotted. Among them was the man who allegedly earlier escaped from the police. The police say the man who was injured was taken to hospital and remains under police guard. Curfew imposed in Manchester following space of killings. Police are reporting that a curfew has been imposed in Albion, Manchester and surrounding areas following Tuesday night's double murder. Kalu, otherwise called Rasta 29, a resident of Albion, and Henry Bourne, otherwise called Iceman 42, a resident of Barnstable, were killed at a bar in Bottom Albion. A 27-year-old man was also shot and injured. Police theorize that the double murder was a reprisal for the August 12th murder of Brent Samuels in Top Albion. The curfew, which started at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, is expected to end at 6 on Friday. Police say the coordinates of the curfew include Fishers Road, the Carchet Road, May Day, Newlands, Hillside, and Albion. Another man, who has since been identified as Romare Williams, 29, a carpenter and resident of Silent Hill, was killed in another bar shooting in the parish on Wednesday night, bringing to three the number of people killed in the parish in the last 24 hours. CPFSE calls for end of bullying of children. The Child Protection and Pharmacy Services Agency, CPFSE, has called for an end to bullying of the nation's children, either by their peers or their parents. In a statement, the CPFSE said the call to action comes amid the resumption of classes as the new school academic year gets underway and highlights the importance of safety units and mutual respect among students. 
Chief Executive Officer of the agency, Lorit Adams Thomas, said the effects of bullying can be immediate and devastating. Adams Thomas noted that children who are bullied often experience anxiety, depression, and a significant drop in self-esteem. These effects can linger, leading to long-term difficulties in personal relationships, academic performance, and even future employment prospects. She wants parents to reconsider how they interact with their children as bullying at home, often disguised as strict discipline, can have equal damaging effects. Students are being encouraged to report any incident of bullying they may experience or witness to a trusted adult, such as a parent, teacher, guidance counselor, or principal. The CPFSA is available to offer support through its 211 Child Abuse Hotline, where students can seek help or make reports. Bullying is a grave issue that impacts the well-being of too many of our children. Whether it is physical, emotional, psychological, bullying can leave very deep scars. This school year, we are asking every student to stand up against bullying and to protect their peers. No child should have to endure the pain of bullying. And it's not just the victims who suffer. Those who bully others are also at risk of long-term negative effects, including social isolation and even increased aggression. It's time to break this cycle and to create a safer, more supportive school environment for everyone. We all have a role to play in ensuring our schools are safe and nurturing spaces. Let us work together to make this school year one where every child feels safe, valued, and ready to learn. Parents, we know you want the best for your children, but using harsh words, excessive punishment, or setting unrealistic expectations in an effort to change their behavior is not the answer. Bullying your own children, even unintentionally, can lead to long-lasting emotional trauma and strained relationships. We encourage you to use positive disciplining methods to listen to your children and to provide them with the love and support they need to succeed. Georgia Foundation answers call for Fire Brigade. William Dixon, Assistant Superintendent of the Jamaica Fire Brigade JFB, who works directly with the paramedics unit, was in happy mood on Thursday, having received supply to assist in the operations of firefighters in western Jamaica. Bars of supplies were donated by Jamaicans Abroad Helping Jamaica at Home Foundation, which Assistant Superintendent said always answers the call when JFB is in need. Accompanying four bars of medical and other supplies, that were handed over to the JFB at the Santa Cruz United Church in St. Elizabeth on Thursday afternoon was a chainsaw with the assistant of superintendent said was well needed. During the passage of Hurricane Burial, we had a lot of work and some of our equipment went down, stuff like the chainsaw we would have asked for. Georgia Foundation has helped us in a lot in getting our ambulance unit back up. We have some units that go down sometimes. Also, they would have helped us a lot with medical supplies that they would have sent from abroad. We have an ambulance that was donated to us by a private person and Georgia Foundation was the one to help us to do a lot of fixing on it. People would have donated, but not really brand new stuff. One and two issues would go down and every time we call on Georgia Foundation, Dr. Trevor Dixon, the founder, always help us, stated the assistant superintendent. I say kudos to Dr. Dixon. He has been a tower of strength for Jamaica, and we are always grateful when it comes because he always carries goodies for the Jamaica Fire Brigade, particularly the medical supplies. We have ambulances that run from Negro to Falmouth on the western belt of the island is where a lot of accidents happen. Georgia Foundation is always there to our rescue when you call on him for any little goodies. Government will have done the, their part, but being a non-profit organization, they are at our of strength, Assistant Commissioner Dixon told reporters. Sections of Green Chill in Westmoreland under curfew. A 48 hour curfew has been imposed in sections of Westmoreland Police Division. The curfew began at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, September 4, and will remain in effect until 6 p.m. Friday, September 6. The boundaries of the curfew are North, 3.3 km along an imaginary line 
from Peggy Berry Primary School to the quarry in the Kings Valley community is 4.35 km along an imaginary line from the Kings Valley community to the pump house at Port Stroud. South, 3.67 km south along an imaginary line from the pump house at Port Stroud in the Cane Interval within Fullerstown community. West, 5.22 km along an imaginary line from the Cane Interval within a Fullerstown community to Peggy Bar Primary School. During the curfew, all persons are required to remain within their premises unless otherwise authorized by the Crown Commander. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.